engaged. I hope you really enjoyed the last session and that you've all been uh, getting on with the homework and having some fun with that. Um, okay, I think we are recording, so if everybody's okay with that, this is just for the benefit of people who can't make it. So just to uh, give us a recap, I will stop presenting. As a, uh, by way of a recap, uh, last session, we talked about what Salesforce is. We talked about uh, Ohana. You watched a couple of videos. Um, and we had a little look around Trailhead and talked about how to sign up for the trail for Trailhead. We also talked about how to sign up for um, top trailblazers. And I wanted to let you know that this week, um, I'm gonna now that now that a lot of you have sent me your trailblazer IDs, I have added quite a few of you to our um, community. So I'm gonna. Aww, baby. <laughs> well, get them in young, get them certified at six months. What's you know? Why not? Um, <clears throat> So um, we talked about top trailblazers. And since our last conversation, I have gone through and added many of you to this community. But there's something I need you to do for me in order to make this work. I am going to put a link in the chat for you. Um, and what I want you to do is copy this link. I know it looks horrible. Um, you can watch the last session on our Google sites, um, so don't worry about that. Can you please all copy that JavaScript that I've put in the chat for me, please? And then in your Chrome browser, right click anywhere in the sort of anywhere where you don't have a bookmark. And then hit add page. And then what I want you to do is to paste that bookmark, that JavaScript into the URL field. And in a minute, I'll explain what this is for. I'm not sharing my screen, am I? <laughs> I better fix that. Just one moment. Oh, okay. So add page, add in the URL, and paste that uh, nasty JavaScript that I put in the chat. And then just give it a name and call it push badges. Sorry, Gemma, we don't have that uh, link in the chat box yet. Okie dokie. Hmm. And anybody see it yet? Oh, scroll down. Yeah, just scroll down to the bottom because if you if you've scrolled up at any point to look at the chat. You, um, you won't see the, the chat feed coming through. So what you want to do is copy the JavaScript and then go to any part of your browser up here where there's a bit of a space. So I tend to go top right hand corner just underneath my user. And I right click and I hit add page. And then I'm going to pull my, I'm, basically what I'm doing here is I'm bookmarking um, a script that my browser is going to run. And I'm going to call it push badges. In the URL, you just paste that nasty JavaScript that I posted. Okay. And then you should see that you have a bookmark in your browser. Here's one I made earlier. Then what I want you to do is to go to Trailhead. And I want you to log in to Trailhead. So you go to trailhead.salesforce.com and you log in. And you wanna to go to your profile once you've logged in. So you just click your, your, your face um, in up here and then you press profile. And it will open up a new tab. And then what I want you to do is click this button that says push badges. It will say, you must be on your profile page. Do you want me to redirect? It, so say okay, and it will redirect to your community profile. And then you press your push badges again. Uh, 
and it runs the script. And what that script does is it takes a look at all the trailhead badges that you've been working on so far, and it pushes them into our, um, into our community that we've created. So I'm just going to refresh the page here and watch all your badges coming through. <clears throat> And for those of you watching and following along online, I will post the chat to this um, to this to this bookmark onto the Google site so that you can do this at home. Now it will take a few minutes, but it will be if you've done any trailhead badges and completed any modules each week, it will actually um, it will actually take that the results and the number of badges that you've um, you've won, provided you're connected, and it will actually show them in this community. Uh, I'm just going to have a look. So, a lot of you having problems. Wasn't quite following. Okay, Jasmine, no problem. What you do is, it, okay, so if you scroll up, you'll see some JavaScript in the chat. So, you just copy. <clears throat> I'll show you again. You go to your, you go to Trailhead. <laughs> go to Trailhead and log in and click your face in the corner and it will open up um and then and sorry you click your face in the corner i'll start again click your face and then go to push badges which is the bookmark that you've just created so that javascript you copy it and then you create a bookmark you put that as the url then you hit push badges um, Emma, you're not sharing your screen am i not no sorry oh my god that's awful okay just one moment resume presenting so sorry everybody i'll have to cut that bit out <laughs> can you see my screen nope yeah thank you so much hey, Gemma. no problem <clears throat> So if you can go to Trailhead, click your profile, make sure you're logged in and click your profile. Then you want to go up in the right hand corner of your browser and click add page if you're on Chrome. And then you want to replace the URL with the JavaScript. Now, if it's not working, then I'll have to help you get hold of your. Hang on, let me just look at the code here. It, Gemma, when I yeah, it's putting yours in. So yeah, so you need to. So okay, I'll. I'll uh, so what you need to do is in that JavaScript where it says Gemma, just replace it with the name at the end of your URL that's shown here on your profile. Is everybody? Does everybody understand that? Have a look. Okay, so you just scroll along until you see Gemma and replace Gemma with the name that is shown at the end of your trailblazer.me URL. <coughs> and then when you've and then you save it. And then that just leave that there as a permanent bookmark. And then when you're ready, you just push badges and it will say you must be on your profile page. Do you want me to redirect? So you say okay. And then you press it again. And now it will run a script using your browser and it will take information about your badges and it will throw it into our group. So when I reload this, I should start seeing some of your badges coming through. Let me just check the chat. Yes, there was a lesson last week, Renee. Um, sorry, let me just say that. Um, there was a lesson last week and there is a Google Drive, there's a Google site where I'm posting all the recordings so you can follow along. Um, and I'll post the URL in the chat towards the end. Okay, Jas Jasmine, what you do is top right hand corner, right click on any part of your browser here. No problem. You right click and you hit add page. And then you paste the JavaScript. And then you need to scroll along 
inside it until you see the word Gemma. And then you replace Gemma, the word Gemma, with what's our, what comes after the final slash on your trailblazer.me ID. And then you save it. And then you go to Trailhead, visit your profile, and hit push badges. You only have to do this once, by the way. I know it feels very complicated, but you only have to do this once. So now let's go and see how you've all been doing, those of you that are linked up. <clears throat> and if your name's not showing on this, don't worry about it. Just send me your, your URL. And I'll add you to it. Okay, well, we'll check that in a bit. So what this is doing is it is effectively collecting information um, for our leaderboard so we can see collectively who's done what badges and, and all of that. But also, I'm running a competition this week, and we all love competitions. I have set up an event, and whoever gets the most trailhead points by the end of the week can win a prize. And I've got lots of really interesting prizes for you. I've been collecting all sorts of Salesforce stuff over the years. So um, so it run, this runs from Monday through to Sunday. So don't worry if don't worry about if don't worry about badges that you've already done up to this point, it will count them. So um, and then you will get to have some prizes. There's push, but you don't see it. It just takes a moment to come through. Okay, so I'll check that. Sh I'll check that shortly. Let's move on. Um, in the chat, have you, if you have made a start on the homework, can you just put um, just just let me know in the chat really quickly, just so I can get an idea of how many people have made a start. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so you'll know all about how to log in to Trailhead. Oh, got the first badge. Fantastic. Um, Brilliant. So you've done the hard part, first of all. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is introduce you to a trail mix that I have put together for you. And we're going to basically go through this together every week just to give you an idea, just to give you some orientation around um, Trailhead. Now, trail mixes are custom learning lists. It's like a mixtape, and anybody can put these together. You can put them together for yourself or you can put them together and share them with other people. You can actually also use on, um, so what I did was went to learn and clicked trail mixes. And then you can actually see there are two tabs. So my trail mixes are ones that I've completed. And I actually have one, I have a trail mix which is called Gemma's to-do list, like badges that I really want to do, but maybe can't do them now because I haven't really got time, but I want to do them in the future. <laughs> So I, I put those in, a, in my own trail mix. And, um, and the good thing about trail mixes is you can include uh, modules, badges, super badges, projects, all of those things together um, at whatever level you want. So you'll know from your homework, your homework is actually to, is showing you around, around Trailhead. So you'll, you should recognize this trail mix here around getting started with Trailhead. Um, but also, you, if you want to, you can actually come through and discover trail mixes that people from the community and people from Salesforce have put together um, and start working on those if you want to. So wherever there is new release, there's new content that comes out, um, you'll be able to see that in its own trail mix now. Um, and you'll be, you know, if you want to, and these are brand new ones that, as you can see, I've not done before because they've, they've never been released before. Um, and they help us to, and as Salesforce buys more companies, we start to see an introduction of more trailhead badges that teach us how the products that these companies have developed um, actually work. You can follow trail mixes so that you get notif notifications or it, or it appears in your in progress uh, trail mixes. And so to start this today, we're going to start our very first kind of interactive thing. So I'd like you to make sure that you've got your browser open. Um, you don't necessarily need to see my screen all the time, but if you have two monitors, that really helps. But if you haven't, don't worry about it. We're going to work for we're going to work through um, a trail mix that I have put together. <clears throat> 
which is called Gemma's Coronavirus Course. Now, please don't misread that. It doesn't mean Gemma's Coronavirus Curse. I think that's enough of a curse for everybody, to be honest. Um, but we're going to make a start working on that. <clears throat> so the first module we have is called Salesforce Platform Basics. I'm going to copy and paste the link to the trail mix. Yes, you do need to remove Gemma. You just need to put it in the link in the JavaScript. You just need to put your own um, trailhead ID. So like, for example, you've got Sunit. Uh, Sunit has posted his link. What he does is it replaces the word Gemma with the word Sunit. Uh, if you're not connected to it, thank you, Baba. Uh, Baba. Um, Baba has posted the link into the chat that explains how you can submit your uh, ID and I will add it to the thing. Now in the chat, I have posted the um, <clears throat> I have posted the link to the trail mix. If you could all click on that for me, please. And we're going to click on Salesforce Platform Base Basics, which is the first module. And you'll see that there are five different um, topics here. Now, don't worry that I've done them. Um, we're going to do them together. Now, this is a hands-on challenge. So this means that you will get the opportunity to provision your own trailhead org if that, uh, or playground, as they're, as they're widely known as. And this is really designed to help you understand what Salesforce looks like and how, to, how it's used. Get to know your, your terminol the terminology and to um, create your first trailhead program. So are you all ready? That's a yes. <laughs> no. Okay, Renee, are you all right? <laughs> yes. Okay, you'll watch. No problem. You can follow along anytime. So, and you can all still see my screen, right? Just checking. Yes, fantastic, good. Okie dokie. So let's get started. So a quick introduction to Salesforce. You might think Salesforce is just a CRM and it stores your data, gives you processes to nurture prospective customers and provides ways to collaborate with people you work with. And it does all these things. But saying that Salesforce is just a CRM is like saying a house is just a kitchen. There's a lot more to it than that. So Salesforce does come with a lot of out of the box features. OK, so those features are centered around if you think about um, when you have an office building um, with, say, five stories, when co when companies want to um, to rent premises, um, they will usually go and visit a shared office or a, an office building and they will say, right, OK, um, I will rent the second floor, for example. Another tenant might be on the third floor, another tenant might be on the fourth floor, fifth floor, and so on. The concept of Salesforce is very similar. The one thing that all of these office blocks, these, these office buildings, that in the office building, all of the office um, spaces share are things like lighting, heating, electricity, broadband, all of those things, all of those utilities that enable them to actually function as a business within that office. However, when you first, if you if you're hiring an office, you know you're going to get those basic things when you hire your office. But but when you get in there, you know you can actually decorate it however you want. You can put um, temporary walls up to build offices within that space. You can have banks of desks around um, for different people to work on, and you can even partition HR off if you want to. Salesforce is a similar concept. When you buy Salesforce, you you pay for a license. Um, and that license gives you access to a very, very straightforward setup of Salesforce, which includes um, leads and opportunities to manage sales, cases, communities for customer engagement. You can automatically, uh, down, you can download the salesforce.com mobile app and anything that you put in the website will come down into the mobile app naturally by itself and you can change how that happens um, you always get chatter so that people can uh, chatter is a facebook style social interface within the application itself so salespeople, services service um, agents can actually um, collaborate and have conversations about specific topics or specific customers 
Um, and also you have the ability to bolt on other tools and to integrate so integrate um, your Salesforce instance with um, other tools and other applications like your finance tool or like your order processing tool, your fulfillment tool. So if any of you who have ever worked, if any of you have ever done jobs where you have to raise invoices, that will be done in an accounting package. But what if but what if you could actually sell something and have that accounting package automatically know that you've sold that it's been sold and produce an invoice automatically? That's the power that that's the power that Salesforce can have. So depending on what you buy, obviously, um, when companies buy Salesforce, they pay for a subscription um, for a certain number of users. They get to choose how many licenses they want to, to consume. And they consume those licenses by creating users and activating them. When those users are active, they're using up a, a seat. When they are deactivated, the, the license is freed up. The seat or license is freed up. So you might hear terms like a license, a seat, an org. An org is your customer's specific instance of Salesforce. It's their office space within the building. And it's, it's hard to explain in, in much detail, but Salesforce um, effectively goes out and buys all these server, these data centers and servers to host, to host your, or your customer's org. So what it means is you could your um, your Salesforce instance could be sharing the same server with Barclays or with um, British Airways or with any other kind of any any other customers that um, that might have Salesforce as well, and that's what we call the multi-tenant architecture, because you've got multiple tenants sitting in the same sitting in the same um, database space. There's a lot that goes on under the bonnet, but I, that's not something that I'm going to go into. I don't want to go nuts on all of that. Um, do we have any questions so far about that? Does anybody, does everybody understand what I'm talking about now with that? Ish, yeah. Yes, okay. yes indeed. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Okay, so depending on what your company purchases, you can get all these features and more. But you have to think about these features as like a model house. You could live there, but it wouldn't be your home. Um, so with Salesforce, you can customize and build, as I've explained. Now, through Trailhead, there are a number of different fictional companies um, that they use with it throughout Trailhead just to help you contextualize um, some of the activities that they ask you to do. So they have Cloud Kicks. They tend to use that to, uh, which is which is um, a fictional shoe and retail company. There's Ursa Major Solar which is a fictional solar panels sales and and they use that for sales and customer service badges. Uh, they've got Get Cloudy Consulting um, and these are effectively, this is a, a fake consulting firm. So you'll, you'll see some of these, these fake uh, and Dreamhouse Realty um, and you'll see some of these fake um, accounts or fake customers being referred to throughout the Trailhead platform. And the idea is to help you contextualize the knowledge that's going in. So let's kick off. Um, Salesforce love to tell stories. The style of Trailhead is conversational, it's friendly, and it's designed to make it fun and relaxing for you to learn. So we'll just, for this module, we have Michelle. Michelle is the lead real estate broker at Dreamhouse. Okay, bear with us. Um, this is, it's obviously an American company, so you will get a lot of American terms throughout. Um, but it's, it's not that different to what we have here. So if you think of um, a, a real estate broker, it's the same as an estate agent. Um, so she finds many potential home buyers through the web and mobile apps. With the apps, customers can browse available homes, make a favorites list of properties that they're interested in, and they can, they can effectively reach out to set up viewings. So it's like right move, if you like. Um, we have D'Angelo. D'Angelo is Dreamhouse's Salesforce administrator. Lucky him. So he's building a set of custom functionality to support her. And that's quite typical in a real life example. You'll have users and then you have a, a Salesforce administrator. I'm going to teach you how to be Salesforce administrators. Salesforce comes with standard stuff, so tracking sales objects like accounts, contacts, and leads. Accounts represent companies, and contacts represent people who work for those companies. 
Leads represent people who are not necessarily, you're not actively necessarily talking to, but they're people that you might want to target if you want to sell to them. Now, we refer to those as objects. Object is probably the, one of the most important terms that you'll come across within Salesforce. We talk about the account object, we talk about the contact object, we talk about the lead object, we talk about the task and event object. We also talk about custom objects. Objects are effectively the same as tables in a database. Now, a database in the context of Salesforce, you think of a giant spreadsheet. So when you put information into Salesforce, it's stored in the database so that you can access it again later. And it's stored in a very specific way. So you'll have rows and you'll have columns. In your columns, you will have what we call fields or attributes, which could be name, age, address line one, address line two, address line three. Those are your columns. And then your rows might be Gemma Blazard, um, my phone, you know, my age, my address and my phone number as you can see here. Now, when we put that information, so the so if you think about that contextually, the spreadsheet is effectively acting as an object because the object is only talking about, you think about your average mailing list in a spreadsheet that's full of names and addresses, that spreadsheet might be saved as campaign mailing list. In Salesforce, each row of those, of that spreadsheet represents a contact. So, effectively what that spreadsheet represents is the contact object. Now, I'm gonna go through some other terminology. In Salesforce, we have what's called an app. Now, I'm gonna open up one of my, um, my demo orgs here and uh, just show you around a little bit um, so I can put some context into it. If you have any questions, just yell. I've got the chat open in a second, in the second screen. Um, or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. So this is Blaze. Blaze um, is the current releases logo. Now I have been practicing field service lightning in here, so let me go. Uh, let me show you around a little bit. So I just talked about what apps are. In Salesforce, the layout is pretty standard, right? So you will always have tabs across the top that represent an object or represent a feature. So your fit, so for example, reports is a feature. Uh, accounts are an object. We also talk about apps. In the top left-hand corner, you've got a, um, a, a dot menu here. And within here, you have apps. And these apps represent um, collections of objects and functionality within Salesforce. So for example, if I'm a salesperson, I can click sales. And it also means that as administrators or consultants, if we want to build an application, say a HR application, and we want to put in um, a contact name, we want to put in their payroll information, we want to put in um, their performance data, we could do that within the context of an app called HR that perhaps, and then we can cut that, that app away from um, the rest of the business and just have it, um, and just have HR people having access to it. Oh, let me just check the chat. Okay, thank you for helping each other. So I just opened up the sales app. Secondly, so your apps are a set of objects, fields, and functionality and features that support a business process. And you can use the app launcher, which is this menu in the corner, to change the app that you want to be in at, the, at that particular time. Let me talk to you about the search, search bar. The search bar appears consistently across all apps in Salesforce. And you'll notice that when I click in here, um, I can actually see the records that I most recently looked at. So for example, Edge Communications is a company which is represented by an account. Then, um, and if you start typing, Salesforce is clever enough that it will start, it will actually help you, and you click the magnifying glass, Salesforce is clever enough that it will help you find it. 
So if I just typed in Edge, you'll see that I can look at Edge Communications, the account, or I can look at Rose Gonzalez, who works at Edge Communications. I can, I can open up Sean Forbes, um, his contact object. And you can, yeah, you are effectively Googling inside Salesforce. Um, and you can open up an opportunity record, for example, that belongs to the Edge Communications account. In the top right hand corner, you have your profile. And in your profile, you can open up your own settings and you can make, make certain changes for yourself. So you can add a profile photo, for example. And you can also update things like your phone number. Um, you can update your address and you can change the day that you start and your administrators can put your employee number in, for example. Now, as an administrator, you can actually change the permissions uh, to allow people to make these changes or not, depending on what you want them to do. There are also a number of other settings that you can configure for yourself, um, which I'll explain later on. To the left. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. So, okay, I'm reasonably sort of IT literate and sort of understand, you know, but the, the gist of what you did. C could you just summarize the sort of the, the context that you're in right now? So you're, you're, you're basically what, an administrator in this dream house company. Uh, are you trying to set up? I'm, I'm just trying to get the context of exactly what you're showing us here. So I just sort of lost the thread a bit. Apologies. So no, at, no, at this point, I'm, I'm just giving an overview at the moment. The point okay, is, okay. is that you can configure it as an administrator. Um, you can configure the experience for different users. Um, but I'm explaining effectively what everybody gets naturally out of the box. Um, and as a user, whether you're an administrator or whether somebody has assigned you to an application, so you could be a sales user or a service user, everybody gets to everybody gets the same options showing across the top of the screen here. Um, you can also configure how you want your display to be shown. So if you like, if you like to see things pushed uh, a bit closer together, um, or you like to see fields and objects kind of pushed further apart, then you can change that. So this is the comfy the comfy setting. And you can see I've, all my tabs are a bit closer together. And then if I want to, I can change it back uh, compact. And then if I want to, I can change it back to comfy. And it will just refresh. Does that so, Sorry, so, you, you, so you're diving, you, you're just sort of diving into a few of the components of Salesforce and just give us a, a quick flavor of how it looks and sort of what you can do yes just just with the very very basics yeah, so yeah sure yeah. top right hand corner everybody gets these okay, okay. um if you're an administrator you get to come in here which is the back door area if you like so that's where you you make changes to the application most business users so your sales people your marketing people your customer service people they they at the most would only be able to view this setup they wouldn't be able to do much with it but as i'm a system administrator i can go wherever i want there's also a, the question mark represents help and training so it there are there is actually guided support for you there so you can talk about uh you can have a look at what lot lightning experiences so lightning experiences is a relatively new um user interface for salesforce as an application it used to look a lot clunkier than this and uh, they've recently given it a whole new makeover and that's called lightning experience and some users who've been using salesforce com companies that have been using salesforce for a long time have a bit of a, a challenge or have a bit of a, a bigger check a bigger learning curve to move over to lightning so this is designed for those people it explains a bit about what the setup menu is um, it gives you the opportunity to to view some sh keyboard sh shortcuts that you can use as you navigate your way around salesforce and there are links to giving feedback getting help going to trailhead and viewing the release notes salesforce releases three does um upgrades three times a year these upgrades are completely included in the price for all um, salesforce customers and effectively 
they are they salesforce releases a whole bunch of new features across sales service uh communities reporting all of those all of the apps that they they sell three times a year everybody gets gets the same upgrades at the same time um so what that means is there's no extra cost to getting that sorted but there is a bit of there there is a, there is some mindfulness involved that because you're getting new features it's probably a good idea as an admin to acquaint yourself with the new features so that you can um, take advantage of them um, we then have the plus sign and the plus sign is for what's called global actions so if you just want to do something quickly let's say you're on the phone to somebody and you need to set yourself a, a task to call them back you can just go to new task and you can start filling in the details and set yourself a reminder um, if anything is, uh, let's say somebody assigns something to you in Salesforce, like a new event or a new task. Let's say, let's say, uh, for example, you're a salesperson. You take a call from a customer, and the customer says, "Can you, I'm calling up for John, but and you see that John is not available at the moment." You can actually use this menu to quickly create a task and assign it to John, and it will he will get that notification under this bell section here that says that you've that he has been assigned a new task and that he needs to complete it so you can effectively just change who it's assigned to so to james for example let's say he needs to call someone by the 27th please call john you can link it to john and save it and that's done right so very 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 quick ways to assign work to other people and as a user it means you just if you are assigned a notification you will see like you get on on facebook i don't know about you but i don't like seeing the red number next to my notifications bell on facebook i like to make sure it's taken care of um then you know that that effectively tells john that he's got a call back to do Are there any questions no okay this is my favorite favorite thing this Sorry, favorite. Deborah, quickly um are we supposed to have this page open ourselves following along or are we just watching you at the moment <laughs> sorry <laughs> um just watch me for the moment and then i'll get you to complete the challenge in I a minute to work. i missed the point where you showed us how to get to this page so i was just watching you thinking i'm not quite sure how to find this yeah sure don't worry about it i'm sorry oh. i should have been clearer i was in gemma land and i didn't no it's fine don't apologize it's <laughs> Totally fine. Just I'm just second. giving just giving you an overview of the tabs. Great. So, um, this one, this particular menu here, the final one is favorites, and that has a star next to it. That is my favorite favorite um, piece of functionality that came in with Lightning. I've got. I've just gone back to my home page. Edge Communications. As a salesperson, Edge Communications is one of my key accounts. So I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to just check my activity with. And, and, my, and the information that I'm keeping about edge communications. Now, as you can see, um, there are two contacts there. So there are Sean and Rose. And I can also see that this is a customer that I've sold to three times, and I've got one open opportunity. This customer is also has also logged three cases. Cases are questions, they are problems, they are bits of fit, there are things that need an action. Um, so as an account manager, this helps me to really plan how I'm going to keep my customer happy by giving me a, a much bigger view of what's going on with that um, particular, what's going on with that customer. Okay. Now, notes and attachments is where you can upload files. But my favorite part of this is that if this is an account that I'm going to be looking after all the time, then I can actually just click this star button. And it adds edge communications to my favorites. So if I'm ever, Salesforce can be interesting when you start clicking through things. And if you find that you just want to go back to that account because you regularly go there and you don't want to search for it, you can't bother to search, you can just hit this and you'll see your favorites here. And it means I can just click on it and it'll open up edge communications. You can do that for reports, you can do it for tasks, you can do it for leads, you can do it for cases, you can do it for dashboards, campaigns, pretty much anything in Salesforce. I think there are some restrictions, some limits um, where you can't do it, but you can also do it for files. 
Okay. So, so that's effectively what apps are. Objects are effect are basically tables. So they're um, in Salesforce that store information. So I just talked to you about a, uh, an account called Edge Communications. The accounts. This uh, the, this this tab here represents a list of accounts effectively, and we call this the account object. The same with contacts. This is this behind this tab is a list of contacts. We call that the contact object. On the account object, I can then, if I click on that tab, I get a list of accounts, and then I can actually change which kind of accounts I want to look at in a list. So if I want to see Platinum and Gold SLA customers, I can I can see just account records that are. Um, I can see just account records that are Platinum and Gold SLA customers. If I want to see customers that were created last week, I can just hit new last week. There were none created last week. Or if I want to look at all accounts, I can do that. So these are all the account records that exist in this particular org of Salesforce. And if I want to make sure that I always see just this view, then I can pin it. And that means that if I go elsewhere, let's say I go to the contact object, and then I navigate back to accounts, you'll see that that view of all accounts has remained. And I can change it, and I can um, continue just working with that. I can also search this list. So say I just want to see edge communications. That helps me to filter that down a little bit. So there are all kinds of productivity features within Salesforce that help you to um, that help you to um, locate information that you that you need. Um, now it's worth just explaining that you will only be able to find information that you are that you have access to. Administrators can change who gets to see what in the system. And if you, so I, I, when I was working as an administrator. Uh, some of my um, customer service people used to come up and say, I'm trying to find this account uh, for Salesforce and I can't find it anywhere. So they get absolutely no search results. Now, that could mean one of two things. One, you don't have access to that account, but or two, the account doesn't exist in the system at all. So as an, as an administrator, because you have access to everything by default, you could do a search and try and find, and then you would be able to see Salesforce and then start to troubleshoot and find out why that person, why that user cannot find that account. Anyway, I talked to you about records. Records are effectively rows. So if you imagine an Excel spreadsheet, you have the rows. And we talked about edge communications. Edge communications is an account record. So we refer to that as a record. And finally, we have fields. Fields are columns in the database tables. When it comes to Salesforce objects, you can have two types of objects. You can have standard objects. These come out of the box. So everybody gets opportunities. Opportunities is a standard object. Everybody gets leads. Everybody gets tasks, files, accounts, contacts, campaigns, um, groups, and cases. They are known as standard objects. However, if I wanted to, I could create a new object, all of my very own, and call that um, order, uh, not orders, because they're a standard object. I could call that a um, timesheet. There are many people who actually use Salesforce to record timesheets, myself included. So I have a custom object where people can put the date and the number of hours they worked and the project they worked on, and I can figure that myself. Within objects and records, we have fields. Now let me talk, let's go back to edge communications and have a look at that record. Now, by default, when you open up the edge communications record, you will see what's known as related lists. Related lists represent other records in this in the system of a different object type that are related to this one. 
Now, Edge Communications, we can see, is the account. And then related to that account, we have two contacts, Sean and Rose, as I said earlier. Now, fields are really, really important concept in Salesforce because if you don't have fields, you can't store information about an account or a customer or a prospect. So Edge Communications has a number of fields, and these fields um, are are usually there are standard fields that come with every object so like account name account owner account number type industry all the fields that you can see right now are all standard fields um, that are given to you out of the box with salesforce however you can create your own fields and you can create fields of many different types you can create phone number fields you could create a lookup to another object so you could say um on this for the for edge communications i want to know um who the primary who the main contact is and i don't want to have to go looking through the related section uh, i just want to see the name and be able to click on it then you can create your own field that looks up to that other record um you can create addresses you can set up addresses and you can set up website fields and you can set up your own drop downs and you can change drop downs uh, values as well as an administrator. And this is where it gets really fun, um, but also where it can get very dangerous. <laughs> um, you may notice that uh, I'm actually viewing this edge communications record right now. If I want to make and if I scroll down, I'll be able to see more fields here. So account name is a field. Ownership is a field. Upsell opportunity is a field, is a custom field that someone has created and doesn't come with Salesforce naturally. As a user, there you have a couple of options when you view this record. One, you can start adding um, new data. So data is what's in the fields. So the fact that it's edge communications, that's an item of data. Uh, it's an attribute of data. The data for edge communications is the whole record collectively. So this would affect in an in a Excel spreadsheet. This would be a row that says account name, a column called account name, and it has edge communications written in it. Um, rating would be a column and it has hot written in it. Um, if I want to make changes to this data, all I have to do is hover over one of these fields and just click the pencil. And that will actually take this record into edit mode. And that means that I can make changes. Let's say, for example, it's got the wrong phone number or you want to add a support tier. You see how there's a little red mandatory, uh, there's a little red asterisk there next to support tier. That means if you try and save this record, it will tell you off for not putting a support tier in. As an admin, you can change that too. You can decide um, to change, you can decide when that red error comes up and also you can decide whether that error should come up generally or for different situations betsy has a question she said can you use records or the change of a record to trigger events and the short answer is yes in many different ways you can have it send an email when you save the record and change it you can have it update other inf other um, parts of the system so other records in the system you can have it send out emails you can have it send out generate automatically generate documents in some cases mm -hmm. it's incredibly flexible and the fact that you have i have saved this record you'll notice that it has updated the modify the last modified by i just changed the sla for this um what did I just change? The support tier for this customer to gold. And what that means is I've changed and modified that record. So you can see for every single record in Salesforce, when it was created, who created it, and then when it was last modified and who last modified it. So you get that stamping going on throughout the system continu uh, consistently all the way through. You can also change the owner of a record as well. Um, this this sometimes throws um, IT guys and girls um, who've worked with tr more traditional um, databases because traditional databases don't have the concept of a record being owned by somebody. Um, so what you can do is when, when the concept of an account owner is really important, and I'll go into the sharing and so on in an another week and explain that. But 
for now, all you need to know is that because this account belongs to me, if someone else looks at this account, they know that I'm the one responsible for it. Okay, question. Let me have a look. So, Gary, if you can customize or add new fields, potentially linked or based on others, when a new release, can integrity be broken? Can you explain a bit more about what, what your question is there? Can they? Do you mean if a new release is made, does it overwrite what you've got? Uh, no, sorry. Okay, just what, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Just, just what you were saying earlier. I've just um, been in the software industry quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if making releases such that everybody gets all the new features is all well and good, but if when you customize fields and you you may be uh, a new piece of functionality or, or Salesforce may implement something which is changed the way something's stored are fundamentally in the database. And so if you get a bit too clever and complex on <laughs> creating uh, customized fields, um, I'm sure they've thought of this, but I'm just uh, just an interesting one, just an alarm bell of uh, if you do too much customization, when a new release of a component comes out or an app comes out, can you can your customizations break effectively? Sometimes, but the but what Salesforce does do is they are very uh, consistent with their process around release. Um, when you buy Salesforce, you can create um, test environments of your Salesforce instance. Um, and that means that anything you do in that test environment doesn't affect what's going on in production. Um, Salesforce then then puts the release into your test environments in advance so that you can test the new release. So, okay, it's, cool. so yeah, it. yeah. you should get yeah. into the habit of testing yeah, that. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. No problem. Let's get back to Trailhead then. So we talked about apps. We talked about objects, records, and fields. Um, I've talked about orgs. Orgs. Org is short for an organization, and it's basically somebody's office space within the building. Does that explain it? So don't worry if you don't get it all straight away. As you carry on to learn about Salesforce, you'll be talking about orgs, records, and fields, and re related lists, and, to, and you will know exactly what everyone's talking about. It's just the initial learning curve. So... This week's homework is all about setting up a trailhead and understanding and understanding how to navigate your way around trailhead. So if you've completed badges already, you may have seen the term um, trailhead playground. Now, a trailhead playground is effectively a Salesforce org. It's a safe environment. You can practice everything that you need to do. You can add data. You can play. It's basically a sand, a sand pit. It's you can play with it. You can add information. Perhaps you could choose. Um, a record that represents a company that you've worked for before and then have a go at adding some contacts to it. Um, and when you sign up for Trailhead, you automatically have a Trailhead playground um, available to you. Something else that you can do is you can create a developer org. And a developer org is yours on a kind of longer term basis where you can, where you have a lot more features available to you where you can, that you can play with. Um, developer orgs, I have, be, I actually have a developer org that is getting on for 10 years old now. It's full of all sorts of rubbish, um, but it's helpful to me because it helps me to test new features and it's all also continually upgraded, just like everybody else's orgs. Um, your orgs are free. You can have up to 10 of them at a time. So if you want to create an org, you just go to any hands-on challenge in Trailhead and click the down arrow next to, next to launch and select create a Trailhead pro, uh, playground. So let's go ahead and, um, and do that now. So if you scroll down to the bottom of this assessment, you'll see there's a hands-on challenge section, which says it's worth 500 points. Now, as you become more acquainted with Trailhead, you'll start to recognize that a 500 pointer means you've actually got to do something and then it will run checks inside your org. It will run a program to make sure you've followed the instructions. Now, to create a Trailhead Playground, you just hit your drop-down list here, and you scroll to the bottom. Just ignore all my rubbish. I've got lots of playgrounds here. And you can either connect a developer edition org, if you have one, 
um, or you can create a trailhead playground. So I'm going to create a brand new one. And then it will actually go away and produce your org. And that's the org you're going to use to complete your trailhead badges in. So please, please go ahead and do that. It will take a few minutes to provision it. And then once you, once you have provisioned it, I want you to hit the launch button. I feel like I should play some elevator music while this is going. Meanwhile, while that's cooking. I can get my uh, bagpipes out and serenade you if you like. Oh, you're amazing. You play the bagpipes? No, not really. <laughs> more of a than anything. <laughs> <laughs> my cousin actually does. There we go. Elevator music. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm bored now already, so I'm gonna go and do it in here. So those of you who have already got an org already because you've been doing trailhead i hope you i hope you have an org yeah we are actually ready to go you have got an error oh dear okay no problem renee speak to you later thank you for joining um Gemma. yes i i've got my trail my, my trailhead playground one and my trailhead playground two is that right yeah, just pick pick number one. Right, okay. And launch it. Cool. Oh okay. dear. Internal server error means that it hasn't finished it hasn't finished doing it. So it has to what you're doing here is is telling Salesforce to make you an org and it has a ripple effect. It has to go off and talk to other systems in order to create one for you. So it could be that you're also in a queue. Because the server can only handle so much at once. So it will sequence your request. So I would just keep trying. Um so I'm going to go and launch. Go ahead and launch my new org. Or if, and if you want to, just pick an org um, that you want to work in. And you'll notice that in the link, it will come up with some um, kind of fun mountain-style names. So mine says "Resourceful Wolf." <coughs> I've had a cunning badger as well before now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and when you log in, it will just say "Welcome." and it will give you a video and you can have a little look around. I'll let you do that in your own time. Um, there are lots of different um, things that you can do to help. Now, some trailhead tasks um, and challenges involve installing packages that people have built. Um, that's, if you imagine back in the day you might install, or even now actually, sorry, that you might install an application onto your computer. It's the same concept. It's just that you're installing an application into your org and it uses magic over the internet to get that done. So to pass this challenge, please make sure you've selected the right trailhead playground because when you come back and check the challenge, Salesforce will run a script in your org to make sure that you've completed it correctly before it awards you the points. So have you all got your orgs ready? Amazing. So launch your orgs. Please open up the front screen and hit your app launcher and go to sales. Okay, what you wanna do is try and find, so just to put some context here, many home buyers who work with Dreamhouse Realty are pre-qualified for a home loan. Brokers want to know how much money their clients can borrow so they can show properties in the right price range. Add a pre-qualified amount field to the contact object so that brokers can record and see this information. So now you get to create your own field. So to pass this challenge, you will need to create a new field. So what you want to do here, I'm going to do this with you, is create a field on the contact object. So once you've gone into sales, you should see something that looks a little bit like a home page. You should see the quarterly performance graph. On the right hand side, you should see a whole bunch of new leads assigned to you. What you want to do is hit the tab that says contacts. So just click on contacts. Sorry, Gemma. Yeah. When I did, I got I got the the welcome page. Where where did I, where do you go from there? So I, I've lost track. The welcome, Gary. So on the welcome page, 
top left hand yeah. corner you've got the app launcher so underneath the blue cloud you've got the uh, okay. so you click that yeah so i got it okay then you click sales uh sales okay okay and that will just basically open up a, a very standard sales app okay gotcha okay then you want to go to the contacts tab so just click on the contacts tab And then guess what? You're all system administrators. So you get the you've got the God permissions. So you get to change fields on the contact object. And the way you do that is you click on uh, the Is everybody up? Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, so is this to retake the challenge? If I do that, is this just going to add to the points or how how do I just go back and just click on that retake the challenge button? Yeah, retake the yeah. Just hit retake the challenge. You've already, sounds like you've already done it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had done it before because I was going through the um, the trailhead. Yeah, so, no, that's great. We're just taking people along for the ride, so okay. um, I'm, I'm retaking it as well. Okay, so I can just choose any of the the playgrounds and still go with it, right? Yes. So if it's already got the uh, all these fields, is it just going to work on it, or do I delete the fields and then start again? Um, I would start a new trailhead playground for this one. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you can get errors. Um, if you have, if it finds two, you'll get an error saying so you've already done it twice. Meh. Right. So yeah, I'll start the the brand new uh, playground. Sure. Okay, is everybody with me on the contacts tab? Okay, so now we're gonna go into the setup menu and this is the secret admin area that your standard users, sales users would not see. Um, if you want to Thank you. Okay, so you're on the contacts menu, then you're gonna go up to the top right hand corner. Remember I talked you through all these different um, options, top right hand corner. You want to click here into the cog and click setup. Now a new tab will appear because it's taking you into a different section of Salesforce. So if you imagine Salesforce has, to, has, has a front stage and a backstage, we're currently going backstage. Front stage is looking at the information and the application itself. Backstage is looking at how to change it. Okay. We are then go, and as you can see, you're in the backstage menu, and there's loads of stuff going on down the left-hand side. And I don't want you to worry about all of that just now. What I want you to work, what I want you to do is just click on the tab across the top that says Object Manager. Now this is a list of all of the objects that exist in your system, in your org, and you'll, there's a mixture of standard objects and custom objects. And you'll notice that each object has a label. That's how it's seen in the, uh, to the public. Ola, if you want to go backstage, you just click the cog menu at the top here, and you click Setup. And then it will bring you to the home page, and then you just go to the Object Manager. So the label is what people is what people see the name of it, uh, the name. So some people change actually relabel their account object to say companies. I've got a client that does that. And then you have what's called the API name. That's the backstage name of the database table. So if you've got developers who want to write code, um, if you've got developers that want to write code, then that's the name that they refer to. That's the that's the name they use in their code to refer to the account object. No worries, Hannah, I'm just explaining the tab. So what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to find contact. Okay, so you should all be backstage now. You should click Setup, Object Manager, and then find contact. Contact, thankfully, you shouldn't have to scroll down too far to find. And you just click anything that's blue in, in Salesforce, you can click on. It's basically a hyperlink. And it will take you to a screen where you can change what's going on on the contact object it is definitely recorded <laughs> okay so i'm going to click on the contact object 
And you'll notice that I, I then come to an overview of, of what this object is. Don't worry much about too much about what you're seeing here. On the left hand side, you've got all the things that you can change about the contact object. For this trailhead exercise, we're just going to create a custom field that's called loan amount. So we need to go to field and relationships. And here you will see a list of all the fields. So remember we went to the contact, remember we, we looked at an account and a contact record. If I find, let me open up a contact record for you so you can just contextualize it. If I'm a salesperson and I view a record for um, Ashley James at United Oil and Gas, you can rename the Trailhead Playground if you want. I actually do that quite a lot especially if I'm working on big nasty badges and I don't want to lose what I've got. So if I look at Miss Ashley James, here are all the fields that I would fill in as a user. Backstage, that's front stage. Backstage, I can actually see a list of all the fields that appear on that, on that layout for Ashley James. And I can make a new one. So we're going to hit new. You'll see here there's a button called new. Again, if you click on anything that's blue, it will take you to another page where you can see more detail about th that field. Gemma, sorry, where, how do we get to this backstage page? I missed that bit. Right. Somehow. Hannah, you go to setup, which is the cog at the top. You go to, it will take you to the setup home. And then you'll, you should see two tabs. One says home, one says object manager. So you hit object manager. And then on, on, then you'll see a table full of objects. Anything that's blue is something you can click on. Okay. So you scroll down until you find the word contact and you click it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And then you want to go into the fields and relationships tab that's on the left. Brilliant. Thanks. Okay. So now we're going to create a new field. Everybody ready? Let's smash it. Go to new. And then you're taken through a kind of a wizard, a guided setup process where you can define what kind of field you're going to create. Can anybody tell me what field we're going to create for loan amount? Currency. That's correct. It is going to be a currency field. So currency and number fields are, are two different things. Currency fields, they both show numbers, but currency fields also show what, which currency is being represented as opposed to just a number, okay? So it's gonna be a currency field. In Salesforce, you can have multiple currencies and that's why that field, is, that field type is specified in its own way. But you'll see there's a lot of different options here um, <laughs> that you can choose from. So we're gonna select currency and then we're gonna hit next and that will take us to the next part where we get to give our field a name. When you're working with Trailhead and it asks you to create fields, you must put in exactly what it says. So if it says the field label needs to be called loan amount, then you need to type in loan amount. Now I just hit the tab button to take me through to the next bit, uh, to the next field. Now you can sort of say how long you want that field to be. How many digits do you want to allow to the left-hand side of the decimal point? Now let's say this is, if this is a currency field, you might want to have pounds and pence or dollars and cents or euros and cents. So if you want to put set, if you want to go down to, um, to a lower number of decimal points, it's really important to note that if you, hang on, that, um, I wonder if that error is still there actually. Yes, it is still there. So you will get an, if you, you notice how I just put in a length of 18, 18 uh, characters to the left of the decimal point, and then I put two decimal places, it shouts at me because the, the two numbers there for lengths and decimal places have to add up to 18. And it tells you that here in a bit of a nerdy way. So if you're doing a currency field and you want to do pounds and pence or US, uh, you want to do dollars and cents, you need to do you need to allow 16, uh, 16 characters to the left of the decimal place and allow two to the right. Just a quirk. Now, as a solution architect, one of the things I'm always banding on about is the importance of leaving a good paper trail behind you. 
It can be really easy as an admin once you get used to once you find your way around Salesforce, uh, these things become second nature to you. And it's, it, you know, creating fields can happen in seconds as opposed to happening in minutes. Um, and one of the things that often gets forgotten is to put a description and to put some help text in against this field. A description, the purpose of a description is to, dis is to describe what that field is there for, and also whether it's involved um, in any integrations with other systems, or whether it's involved in um, any automations that you might have built. So somebody asked earlier, if I create a field and it's changed, can that trigger off an event in the system? The answer to that is yes. The good practice is to actually describe here that, that the fact that that is happening. And to leave a good audit trail behind, because what often happens as a consultant, I will go in and do this for customers. And then uh, for only for a certain period of time, I might only be working with them for a week or two. So I might create a field and then disappear off and nobody knows why I've created that field. And nobody knows what impact um, it, it might have if I change that field. It could break an integration or it could break a report or it could affect things that other people are building as well. So as admins, I mean, one of the things my dad always said to me, because my dad was a chef, for 22 years, he's always said to me, a good cook always washes up after herself. And this is part of that. I can, I've, I've kind of apply that to, to this. So in the description, I'm going to say currency field. You don't have to do this, but it's good practice. Currency field to record the amount, the loan amount. And then I might say used for guided um, application process. Okay. Now, this is internal facing, so your users won't see this description, but your users will see what's in your help text. And one of the things I like to do is to introduce conversational um, instructions into a Salesforce org. Uh, whenever I create a field or a validation rule, validation rules are effectively errors. So I, I, have, I, have, um, I have a couple of cheeky ones in my own um, consulting org where if someone puts in a timesheet, um, for um, a date in the past, and I've got a load of sarcastic error messages that come up and say, really, if, if you've learned how to time travel, could you like share it with the rest of the group? Um, so you can put a few cheeky things in there if, if that's your culture um, and, um, in, and environment. Your help text should give instructions to users. So I would put in here, enter the amount you wish to borrow. Or if this is, think about your audience when you write your help text as well. Is this internal? If this is internal for a mortgage broker, then you will put um, enter the amount that the customer wants to borrow. Okay. Now something else you can do is you can actually define whether you always need someone to put something into this field before they can save it. So that's the same as making it mandatory. Bearing in mind that if you do that, that can affect data loads. And it can also affect when, if you have automations um, that need to run and there's no data and there's myth, there's no data in that field, it can break your automations. One of my one of the things I like to do is I try and avoid using this using this checkbox unless unless I need to enforce that integrity across all of the functions that I'm building in Salesforce, so whether it's a user updating a record or it's another database writing into Salesforce for me. And I want to make sure that that field is always populated. You can also use fancy formulas to put default values in. Now, this is very, very restricted, very limited. But if I wanted to say that by default, the loan amount is always going to be um, zero, then whenever somebody creates a record, um, it will automatically put zero in the loan amount field that you create. I'm going to hit next. And here is where you define who gets to see and touch that field. And I will talk about profiles and permissions a little bit later. So for now, let's just leave it as it is. These are all the profiles that I have that I can assign users to. Someone says, wait, are you okay? Did 
did we do something with the formula no we didn't i was just talking about it we're good no problem so then you scroll down and just hit next and then finally the final step in this process is to decide which page layout you want this field to appear on let me tell you what a page layout is a page layout is how all these fields are grouped together and guess what as an admin you can change that you could create a section which has phone numbers in it so what you what and also you can create different versions of page layouts for different people you could give finance a page layout which includes important information like a company registration number or VAT registration number that perhaps someone in sales wouldn't need to see so you can so and you can create a new a new layout for them for that and then assign it to a profile that's occupied by finance so here is where you decide which page layouts you want to add your field to we're just going to leave it leave it as it is for now and we're just going to hit save And that's it your field now exists so if you scroll down you should see your new field which is called loan amount and you'll notice that in you've got the label called loan amount you've got your and then you've got what's called the API name and it has a double underscore and a C on it and that indicates to you that it's a custom field that has been created by a system administrator as opposed to a standard field which doesn't have a double underscore C on it so that's how you can tell whether a field is, is, uh, comes to you out of the box with Salesforce or whether a person has logged in and made that field. So let's go and have a look at Ashley James. Notice how my new field isn't on this layout at all. What happens when I refresh the page? And I go to the details. There is my new field called loan amount. And you remember I put some information in the help text. If I hover over the little I there, the little gray circle, I can see the help text that I put in as an administrator. Cool, huh? So I might want to say, if I edit this record, I might want to say that she wants to borrow £250,000. And I save it and look there's the loan amount 250,000 pounds so now if you've all been following along please go back to trailhead and click check challenge and it will log into your org for you and it will check for your loan amount field And if it's, if it's found it correctly, it will tell you that you've passed. And you get lots of confetti saying that you have a shiny new badge on your profile. Woohoo! So please make sure that you share your achievement on Twitter so that we can celebrate it with you. You got assessment complete? Fantastic. Um, if you haven't connected it up to Twitter yet, don't worry, you'll just see a login page and it'll ask you to log in and tweet. But you get the confetti. Now, just for fun, um, let's go to your... Actually, I'm not going to do that. When you, finished, when you finish this, I want you to all press push badges and we should get it. We should see it all coming up in your... Um, in the community challenge. Okay, any questions about creating fields so far? Don't worry, Sean, we'll sort it out afterwards. I'll get the instructions and put them on the site for you. Okay. So then we go to the, ne the next part of our challenge. So I'm going to go back to, so we have get started. Okay, that's actually that whole badge, isn't it? Uh, no, yeah, that's the first one. So the next badge, hopefully you should see 
don't worry, we'll sort it out, Sean. On the next badge, you should see um, you should see an option to go to the next to the next stage. So if you click that, and then we end up in the next section, which is discover use cases for the platform. Um, then it talks a lot about um, an example of why the platform is, um, you know, what sort of things could you use Salesforce for? Um, and one of the benefits of using Salesforce is the fact that um, it's very easy and very fast to create these changes. You notice how that probably took us about five minutes because I was talking you through each step. But if you're doing that most days, um, you get very used to doing that very quickly. Um, and before you know it, you've configured your own app within an hour and it can get a lot of fun. So we talked about objects and uh, in, the, in the last unit, and we talked about uh, custom objects as well. What we're going to do um, next is, 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 when, is talk about those custom objects. So this example from Dreamhouse, uh, Michelle and her fellow um, estate agents use email to discuss different properties, right? So those of you who worked in offices, you might see people either using live chat or um, emails to send information to one another. Chatter is a different way that you can do that. And it actually helps to, it, it, it's proven to reduce email in organizations and to keep conversations very focused on specific things. For example, um, one of the um, brokers created a custom property object which helps you to track you know name and address of a property and, and the details like how many bedrooms does it have how many bathrooms how many reception rooms etc when you create an object you can actually create a chatter feed and this looks a lot like facebook and twitter mixed together so if those of you who are used to social media imagine this is social media for work and you can chat about an individual property so here is an example where Michelle has gone on to a property that's called 503 Park Drive. She can follow that property so that she gets updates. If people go and add, um, if people go and add posts or post against that property, she'll get notified and she can join in the conversation. On Chatter, there are a number of different things you can do. You can just write a simple post and mention your colleagues and friends um, who are in sale in the same Salesforce org as you. Um, you can create a poll. Um, so if you want people to vote on a specific action, you can do that. Or if you want to ask a question and have that answered, you can do that too. So it's like a forum um, type experience. Now, with um, if you're working in an, an organization where you've got a lot of emails going back and forth, where people are relying on spreadsheets, where there are time intensive, repetitive steps to, to take, for example, processing an order, um, and you need feedback from people and you're phoning them, they can't get hold of them. Um, you can leave them a message on, on Chatter um, on the platform. Now, there are several use cases as well that are included in this module. So like HR can create an app for job openings, um, create applicants and track time off. IT could use it to look after their ticketing system. So when people need IT support, um, if you're in finance, you can look after contracts and pricing. Does someone have a question? No? Okay. So at the end of this uh, module, I don't think I can retake this quiz, which is a bit annoying. Um, Hannah, if you're there, can you read out the questions? <laughs> I'm here, but I'm not sure if I'm in the right place. Hold which questions where? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So Fatima's writing that. So, so have a go at the quiz. Having um, have a look through the because I can't see the questions because I've already completed the module. But have a look at the quiz and have a go at answering the the questions on the quiz. How do I get back to this course? Is what I'm trying to find. Shall I read the questions? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Anna, I'll, put the, I'll put the link in the chat. Okay, what, what, the, the question, when identifying processes to bring into Salesforce, look for, you want the options, yeah? Yep, go for it. 
A, manual processes with numerous steps. B, email driven processes. C, teams using spreadsheets to run the business. D, documents shared on local directories. E, all of the above. What does everyone think? If you don't mind, can you please repeat the question? I'm trying to. The problem is, is I've already finished it. So okay. I can't find the quiz. Is it's that the bottom? Oh, here we go. At the bottom there. Sorry, I'm completely lost now. Okay, but, Anna, in the chat, I've put a link to the module. Yeah, when I click on that, it brings me up to a page called Discover Use Cases for the Platform. That's the one, yeah. But and I can't see the quiz. You scroll down, scroll down to the bottom where it says challenge. Oh, hold on. Okay. Right, yeah, sorry. It wasn't loading it um, fast enough. Sorry. That's all right. No problem. Okay, so when it, okay, so this, this, this is an example on Trailhead where you'll get a quiz where you need to, um, where you need to go back, you might need to scroll up and go back and, and review some of the information that's there. Um, if you get both these questions right the first time, you will get the maximum amount of points. Okay, so yes, um, I would say that definitely question one, um, E would be a sensible, a sensible response. Any ideas for question two? The three use cases for finance on the platform are okay, but Barbara, I agree with you, it's going to be C, which is budget management, pricing, and contract management. And you won't, a partner, I don't have an option to retake it either. That's why I've done it in an incognito window. Okay, yay, did everybody get that? <laughs> Yay, congratulations. Did you get a badge or just confetti? Okie dokie. Now, when you're, when you're navigating around, um, remember at the top here, oops, I'm going to go back. At the top, you've got um, you get the whole path. Oh yeah, you've got confetti. That's good. At the top, you've got a whole path here, so you can you can get get to any modules that you want to within that particular trail. So this is this is a badge that's to do with platform basics. We've complete. You'd be able to see which ones you've already completed. Okay, now let's have a look at the architecture. I should have brought a bottle of water. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to talk through the Salesforce architecture at a high level because I'm aware that, you know, you've all created a custom field today, um, which is a fantastic first step. So well, let's let's quickly go through this bit because this the whole point of this module is to introduce people to the cloud as a concept as opposed to installing um, IT systems on your computer. Um, but actually, the thing to note with, with Salesforce is that um, when we talk about applications, we talk specifically about, about functions that are designed to look after a certain business process. So sales, service, um, marketing, community, analytics, custom applications that you might want to build yourself. We have commerce that was, that was introduced into the ecosystem a couple of years ago um, that, and that allows people to build their own shops, online web shops. And we have Internet of Things. Internet of Things is really quite interesting. That's ways to make changes in Salesforce and have them actually translate to a physical device um, in front of you. So there's a really good trailhead module on um, where you have to order a thermometer for your fridge and then you have to get Salesforce to make changes. Um, uh, you, you've got to make certain things happen in Salesforce based on the temperature changing um, on that thermometer. Um, we then have Quip, 
which is a, you imagine we have, those of you who've worked with Excel or Word and spreadsheets and PowerPoint slides, Quip is a way for lots of you to work on the same document or PowerPoint slides or spreadsheet at exactly the same time. Um, and then we have the App Exchange, which is the App Store for Salesforce. And all of these um, applications have been built using the same platform underneath. Now, the platform is what we have been working with just now, which is the fact that you can create fields, you can create objects, you can create page layouts, you can create applications themselves. That's that common piece that spreads across all of the apps that you've got there. So we call that the, the platform itself. We then have um, Heroku, which is a completely other data, completely different data uh, developer focused database platform. We're not looking at Heroku today, that's more advanced than you need to know right now. Um, and then we have uh, the Einstein layer that kind of sits across everything as well. And Einstein is an um, augmented intelligence um, engine that, that sits within Salesforce and enables you to uh, make predictions based upon information that's been entered into Salesforce. For example, you have a large sales organization, they're all entering opportunities. As time goes by, the Einstein engine can push a notification to a sales director to say, here are all the opportunities that we think are, are not gonna close, even though the salesperson says they're gonna close, based upon previous opportunities that are quite similar to this one. So Einstein represents the smart part of Salesforce that actually helps people make decisions based upon how things have happened in the past. Um, we then have the data management platform as well. So this is, this is all the stuff that happens under the bonnet that is controlled by Salesforce um, and at their data centers. And it's the way that we handle very large data, volumes of data and the underlying database itself. So there is an awful lot to, compact, to unpack here, but the most important point is Salesforce is a cloud company. Cloud basically means on the internet. Um, everything that you do on Salesforce happens within your own org. Remember I used that magic word multi-tenant earlier. Um, it's your own space within that website and if you so it effectively translates to be your office space within the office building that everybody rents. Everything's integrated. Um, we talked about um, Einstein intelligence um, and anything that you see across here that goes across the whole platform is completely built into everything that you have. So there's nothing else you have to install. It's just there and it just is waiting to be switched on. Um, for a lot of traditional on-premise um, software, users and IT departments there's a lot of there's a lot of debate going on about why should we trust the cloud like why would you put everything um, that that you use to run your business on a public internet and this is where it becomes really important to understand that Salesforce is, is in, everything you do on Salesforce is tightly secured um, and when there's data flying around the internet, it's also encrypted as well. Um, and Salesforce is really uh, transparent about their, the performance of their data centers um, and how they secure your data and also when you can expect any, any maintenance packs to be coming out as well. So they have a website called trust.salesforce.com and you can actually go and look there to see if there's any risks um, with, your, and, and with the system. Um, and you can actually have a look at um, some of the, the different, because they obviously have different thing, different packages that they work on. So if you're a MuleSoft user, for example, then you can look at the status of MuleSoft. Don't worry about MuleSoft, it's an integration platform. Um, tell me if I'm, just yell at me if I'm getting too advanced at this stage. But this helps you to kind of see, you know, what are the ongoing incidents? Well, actually, this is the coronavirus update. Um, and it gives you a message as to, to see these are the measures that we're taking, that Salesforce is taking for the pandemic. Um, and then if it, and then you can um, actually check what's going on in your local area. Um, there are data centers dotted all around the world, so you can actually have a look and see your, when you create an org, it will be provisioned on a data center instance and you can check the instance and the status of that instance. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Here is the analogy around um, 
multi-tenancy. So there's your dedicated space and you have shared resources for power, water, building, maintenance, etc. cetera. Um, and then I want to talk about there's just two other there's two other concepts that I want to introduce you to. One is the word we talked about data being the information that you put into the fields on your Ashley James contact record, for example. So the fact that she is a VP of finance and she works for the finance department and that's her birth date, that is all data, the collectively known as data. I want to introduce you to the concept of metadata. Can anybody guess what I mean by the word metadata? Production data, anything like that? Production data. Um, when you say production data, what do you mean? Is it live uh, data that someone should Yes. Use? Yes, it is a live data, something like that. Not quite. Billy, that's absolutely right. It is data about data. Uh, thank you, Fatimat and Aparna as well. Um, you're absolutely spot on. De metadata is data about data. So looking at this screen right now, what, what do you think is metadata on this screen that you can see? Note takers. Okay, I'll give you a clue. If phone number, if phone number, if this phone number here is meta, is a, is data. What can you the see? Format there? of the phone number. Close. Not quite, Jim. You're absolutely spot on. It is the field name. So the actual number is the data. The metadata is the fact that it's a mobile number field and all of the details, as Sunit says in the chat, yes. So the field label is metadata. The field um, length is metadata, okay? The fact that it's the data type is phone number is metadata. The other concept I wanna to bring to your attention is about the API. Now, the API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's like a tunnel between two systems that allows data to flow between those two systems. And one of the things we have to do as solution architects is decide um, when, data, when data flows, how often it flows, how much data needs to flow, so, and how many messages um, we want to send in one go. And it's really important because we use the API to send messages between two systems. So they allow different pieces of software to connect to each other and exchange information. And sometimes um, you have two, piece, two pieces of software that speak different languages. There are tools that you can use to translate the information that, that is being transmitted between the two pieces of software. Let me just check how we're doing for time, 15 minutes. Um, Think about when you plug in, when you plug your phone into a USB port to your computer, your phone is what is one piece and your computer is the other. And the cable is what's transmitting the data from the phone into your computer um, to pass that information. And that's exactly what APIs do. They just do it in a way that you can't see using, using your browser and using internet protocols to do that. When we um, created our custom field earlier, remember the API name that we said? So you have loan amount is the label, and then you have loan underscore uh, amount underscore underscore C. That's the API name. Um, Betsy, I'll answer that one in shortly um, around the open API endpoint. Um, when we create that, um, when we create that field, it creates an API name, and that is how uh, that's basically your access point between your org and the Salesforce database. So underneath, Salesforce has a bunch of tables um, that might say that a bunch of tables, and one of them will be field. And in that field, in that field table, you will have this is the org it belongs to with a unique ID. This is the name of that field. This is the um, the API name of that field. And then this is the label that goes with that field and all of the metadata 
attributes that go with it, so like the length and the type and so on. <coughs> so Salesforce uses that API name to get hold of the data that you're looking for from the underlying database. Okay. Um, now let's go and have a look at the quiz around the architecture. Now, don't worry if that's blown your brain. Um, it blew my brain the first time I heard of it. So let's have a look at the questions and the quiz. You can get 100 points for this one. So let's let's go for it. So our trusted multi-tenant cloud means that you get benefits of the same core set of features, upgrades three times a year, no software to install to access Salesforce or all of the above. What does everyone think? All of the above. OK, let's, put, let's mop that one in. Question two, the Salesforce API is a, like a contract between two pieces of software allowing them to connect and exchange information. Two, not available for certain technologies like wearables. Uh, C, the exact same thing as an API name. Or D, only for programmers to use. <laughs> okay, just lock in the answer you think it is. Now, metadata, what does metadata refer to? A, everything in your org, including your customer and user data. B, a representation of your standard functionality without customizations. That's a bit wordy, isn't it? C, data about data. Or D, configuration-based modifications only. OK, if you're ready, you can hit submit, check challenge. Congratulations. OK. Great. So hopefully you now all understand that. Let's use the last 15 minutes and see if we can get the rest of this badge done. And then you can, nice. And then you'll all sleep really well tonight. Congratulations, everybody. You've got 100 points. Um, the next one, I think, is another quiz because it's only worth 100 points. If it was 500, we know it's hands-on. So, as we said, as administrators and consultants and architects and everyone else, congratulations to everybody who got 100 points. Woohoo! Um, you'll be spending a lot of time in, in the setup area, the backstage area. And... Uh, so it's worth getting to know what, what's going on backstage and what, what you can expect to see when you first log in. OK, so um, so you can get to set up from absolutely anywhere in your Salesforce org. The one thing I wish I could do is favorite the set like certain areas of the setup area. But unfortunately, I can't. Um, so what you want to do is in Salesforce, you go to your setup menu. If you don't know where that is by now, um, then I'm worried. So go into uh, your setup area and just have a little look at what you've got. And I'll talk you through the, um, the page and what to expect. So at the top, as ever, you've got a search. And actually, this is a different kind of search. You're not searching for data here. You're searching for settings um, that you can configure. And this is the beauty of Salesforce, is it's full of little switches and dials um, in the backstage setup area that you can tweak. As you have seen, you have created a new field. Now, in the main page, you will have links to certain things. So if you want to, uh, there's, a, there's a, an app. You can create your own branded mobile app using Mobile Publisher. If you want to get started using, collab using Quip, you can do that. You want to join, you can get to the Trailblazer community from here. Um, and there's various other options that you can use um, to have a look at. If you're an administrator, you can also download a mobile app that enables you to, to activate and deactivate and manage users, which I've used a few times, which is quite good. And then we have the most recently used section of the setup. So you can see that because I just provisioned my Trailhead Playground, the user is the first thing I looked at. And then I created my custom field. So I can just I can get to that really quickly. And, and like I said, anything that shows up as blue is a is a link so if i want to go and look at the contact object i can just click on that if i want to go back to my field and change some settings then i can i can just click on loan amount <coughs> so and then on the left hand side you have got um the setup menu on the left 
And again, you can use the quick find. I use this because these menus, if you start clicking some of these um, little chevron signs, they expand the menus. And there's a whole tree of different settings that you can dive into. And this can be very overwhelming for someone who's new to this. Um, in fact, sometimes it can be very overwhelming to someone who has been used to this for 12 years. So actually, I got into a habit of using quick find for pretty much everything because I know I generally know now which settings I need in order to to perform certain um, functions. And you won't know that yet, but as you as your journey continues, you will start to know your way around and feel your way around and be able to find things quickly. Um, the menu is split into administration, so if you want to go and create a new user or adjust some of the permissions, you can do that um, using the administration menu. If there's information that you want to, um, that you can, if you need to mass transfer records between users, we did that when um, in my first role, um, we had somebody leave the sales organization and someone else inherited all their accounts. So we use mass transfer records to find all accounts that were, don't worry, Hannah, I'm just showing you around. Don't worry. Um, you can, I, I use that to basically transfer all that person's accounts over to a different person. Um, so there are various different tools that you can use in, in each section. Then you have the platform tools. This is where you can configure your objects and field where you can create automated processes so someone said earlier if i change a record can it then trigger an event this is where you create those events and uh, before the end of this course you'll be creating some of those automations so um should be fun there's notification builder relatively new um application new feature where you can just throw messages at people as they're working through the system and then you finally have things like your company settings so this is where you can change um your fiscal year so you can decide you can change um the start date of your financial year um you can add in holidays and you can set up your own domain um, if you, which creates a unique ID for your org, if you want to, if you want to implement more advanced login capabilities like single sign-on. So don't worry if you're lost. I'm just showing you around at this stage. Um, it is, it is a very tricky place to navigate because there are loads of things that you can access and ways to get around what you want. Um, in the trailhead module, it highlights the areas that you're going to want to get at more often. So I already mentioned company information. That's where you find your org ID, which is your unique reference number for your trailhead playground. Um, you can reset passwords. You can change user profiles and permissions. But also, you can actually see six months of history in your org. So when people, if, if somebody has gone into um, your org and made some changes, and you're concerned about it, you can go and actually check who made the changes and when, and you can ask questions around why they were made. Um, let's have a go at the quiz for this module. So question one, the company information page is where you can find A, your org ID, B, your licenses, C, your information on important limits, D, all of the above. Okay, let's lock that one in. What are the, th question two, what are the three main categories in the setup menu? So you have object management preferences and groups, user management settings and security, administration platform tools and settings, app exchange profiles and customizations. Hannah, you, Hannah, you need to be in your trailhead playground to follow along. Okay, I'll, I'll get to you after, I'll show you. Don't worry about it, so we're, we're running a bit short of time. Um, then three, question three, what's an easy way to find what you're looking for? Type A, type the first few letters of what you're looking for in the quick find. B, click headings and subheadings so you find what you're looking for. D, memorize what's in each category, which is obviously a lot of fun. D, click one of the main categories in the setup menu and then look to the page on the right. Okay, fantastic. Do you want to check your challenge? Yay, well done. Well done, everybody. 
<laughs> I love seeing you all get so happy about this. It's great. Okay, we have one more, and then we've completed the first step. Okay, so finally the app exchange. In the first in the first session, I talked about how there's an app store and how um, Mark Benioff came up with the name for the app for the app store and donated it to Steve Jobs for Apple. And then what we have for Salesforce is the app exchange. Um, when you're downloading apps on your phone or tablet, you have to download and install apps so that you can do certain things like Facebook or Twitter. Um, then what you do is um, uh, is install those apps. Well, you could do exactly the same in Salesforce. You can install an app into your org. Now, for example, there are, there are certain apps that you use for certain things because Salesforce can only get you so far before it becomes really hard to scale the, the product across lots of different companies and lots of different use cases. So, um, so there's companies out there that have made millions in building their own um, specific apps like Conga has built a contract generation module um, and Financial Force have built an, an accountancy application. Distribution Engine creates lead assignment rules. Um, there's all sorts of different use cases. There's even um, companies like New Voice Media or OneEdge who have created um, a mob have created a telephony app, which means you can take calls directly through Salesforce and have them logged automatically for you. There's loads of really cool stuff that people have built. So, App Exchange. When you when you when you shop from the App Exchange, it's it's really important to have a strategy. Um, you know, there's only so much time that you can spend as well building applications on Salesforce. Um, so when you are think when you have a specific thing you want to do, um, let's say you decide that you want to you want to route all your phone calls through Salesforce. Um, you have to think about it. What, what would it take for me to build that myself? Do I have the skill set? How much is it going to cost me? Do I have the time? Whereas is it actually worth just me buying licenses for this new application where it's all built for me and it is also continually upgraded so I can keep I can keep moving forward with, the, with those innovations, and I haven't had to have I haven't had to build it myself, um, and I haven't had to go and change it myself as it as everything as Salesforce progresses. So, the steps to develop a good app exchange strategy are to look at the departments that you you that use that plan to use Salesforce, um, and these are basically the people that you need stories from. You need to understand exactly how um, they want to use Salesforce and why, and what information they can bring to the table about how they want to work going forward. Um, think about the business problem that you're trying to solve. These stakeholders can help you to define that business problem that you're trying to solve. Look at what your look at what's not working so well in your company right now and identify the, how you can actually turn those pains into gains using Salesforce and using your newfound knowledge on Salesforce. Um, now, when it comes to installing applications, you can find there's a, an app here um, on the App Exchange, um, and there's a link that no, there's not a link to it. Um, you basically go to the App Exchange and find the app, and then you can click. Uh, many of these um, App Exchange providers will actually give you the option to install a free trial. So you just click Get It Now. You tell it where you want to install, so whether you want to install um, the app in your playground or whether you want to install it into a test environment, which is known as a sandbox. Talk about sandboxes later, I promise. Um, when you've installed it, you can then go, go ahead and use it. But the, um, And later on, I'll talk to you about the different types of packages that you can install, because there are some packages that you can change and some packages that you really can't change. And they're the ones that get upgraded by other people. So our final quiz on the App Exchange. When you're getting, question one, when you're getting started with the App Exchange, best practice is to A, install apps of interest right away. B, request the top three app from each department. C, develop a plan, including budget, timing, and use cases. Or D, install directly into production. And if you say D, I'm going to find you. <laughs> OK, question two. When you want to find an app after you install it, what should you enter in the quick find box in setup? A, installed apps. B, installed packages. 
C, installed components, D, installation, or E, apps. <laughs> Okay, lock it in. And you're right, everybody, it is C and it is D. No, not D, B. <laughs> okay, have you all got your confetti and your badges? Yay, party time. Congratulations, everybody. Well done. Okay, so let's wrap it up because we've come to the end of our session. Thank you, everybody, for um, sticking with us and, um, and, um, and your patience. I know it's quite a lot to take in. Um, we have today gone through the basics so we've created a custom field we've looked at the use cases we've all received confetti um, the next class will be next monday and um, we've also looked at the salesforce architecture we've had a look at the backstage area and compared it to the front stage area and we've touched upon the app exchange as well uh, please make sure that you complete your homework this week um, and i will send out instructions for how to push your badges to the um to the coronavirus course um leaderboard and if you keep going and get some more points there will be a winner and they will the winner will win some swag and we love our swag at um in the salesforce world we all have stickers and plushies and and everything and i'm sure i've got lots of those um i will share i will share the trail mix with you uh, um i'll share the name of the trails um on the google site let me get you the link to the google site and put it in the chat for you and i will post the recording there as well and yes, it will be the same Google link. So hopefully you've all 100,000 points. <laughs> hopefully you have all, um, hopefully you have all received um, the calendar invite. If not, you can follow along on the stream. No, we, we so just a quick note, Gary, um, everybody voted to have the net, to have two sessions a week instead of three. So I'm going to leave you with, um, I'm going to leave you with the, massive amount headload of information um from today and let you enjoy it and get on with your homework and if you have any questions please post them in the ask a question sheet and that will be monitored by all our volunteers thank you very much everybody for joining we've loved having you take care bye thank you